today we are going to be making a file server from an old Power Mac G4. Now, if you don't know what a file server is, I'm sure you're watching the wrong video, but essentially the file server's job is to be a mass storage device. For example, I could put several terabyte hard drives into a computer and use it as a file server where all the other computers on your home network in your household will be able to access the files on all the hard drives in that computer. So rather than, I have a 320 gigabyte hard drive in the PC you're watching now, but rather than using several terabytes external hard drives that just connected to this computer, I can put several terabyte hard drives attached to a SATA controller inside my Power Mac G4 and set it up so that it, um, so that I can access the files on all of those hard drives from any other computer in the house and that's what a file server's job is. So we're going to set up this Power Mac G4 which I have for convenience running remotely here on TeamViewer. Don't be fooled by this Snow Leopard server wallpaper. This is a stock installation of 10.5 Leopard. I'm going to go on about this Mac. I highly advise you watch this in full screen on your computer because all the text is going to be very small. I'm sorry the zoom function doesn't work very well. Um, but for the purposes of this I will zoom in just for this bit. Uh, it will say here there we go. This is a dual 867 MHz PowerPC G4 processor uh, running Mac OS X version 10.5.8, which is a stock installation of Leopard. This is not a server. This is just a standard Power Mac G4 MDD. So we're going to set this computer up here so that a hard drive, I've not actually got the hard drives that I want to use, but we're going to be using, see here there's a 60 gigabyte Seagate, and for the purposes of this video I'm going to say I want to access that hard drive from all the other computers in my house whether they're running Mac OS, whether they're running Windows or whether they're running a distribution of Linux such as Ubuntu or any other version of Linux. So for all three operating systems I want to be able to access the, all the files on this hard drive and wherever other files I want to access on this Mac as well. So to do this, first of all we have to go into System Preferences on your Mac and uh, go on Sharing. Right, we need to make sure file sharing is turned on. This will be off for you probably. So make sure this is ticked. It says ticked for on. It will go green and it says file sharing is on. And you need to give it an appropriate computer name which will be seen for you from your other PCs, Macs, whatever. So mine's simply called Power Mac G4 Server. Now here, this is where we'll set up our shared folders, but we won't do that until later. So for now, just make sure file sharing is enabled and go back. Next up is making sure it's connected to our Windows workgroup so that we can access files from Windows-based PCs. Whether you're using Airport or Ethernet or any other form of internet connectivity you need to make sure you access the one that is connected in my case airport and to make sure it's unlocked if it says if it's locked here press unlock and enter your password and click advanced so now we have all these options and we need to go to WINS which is win server now here we need to all we need to enter here is a netbios name and our work group for the netbios name enter something fairly short which will be seen on your Windows PCs. So for example, mine is called Power Mac G4 Server, just PMG4 Server. And Workgroup, this is where, this is important you need to get this right. So on Windows, to find out your Workgroup, go on Start, Control Panel, System and Maintenance, System, scroll down and it says Workgroup here. In my case, my work group is just called HOME in capitals. So once you have found out your work group name, you must enter it in the bit that says work group. So mine's HOME, so you type in HOME. You don't need to do anything here. Just press OK. And now that is connected to your work group, so you'll be able to access this computer via the network on Windows. 
so now let's set it up so that the files that we want can be shared to other Macs, Linux distributions and Windows PCs. So go back on sharing. Uh, this is the screen we had before so go on options and we have three boxes here. These will probably all be unchecked for you but you need to check them all or depending on your needs. The top one, check this share files and folders using AFP. This is for other Macs and other users of this same Mac server to access the files that you specify or hard drives that you specify. Ticking this, share files and folders using FTP, this is so that Linux distributions can access the server. And the bottom one, share files and folders using SMB this is so that Windows PCs can access files and um, whatever you specify hard drives on your server. So make sure all three of these are checked if, you, if you're going to be using all three operating systems. And if you check the Windows one, then you must check the account that is your main account on your server. So in my case, I've only got one account anyway. But the administrator on your server must be checked on as well. So once this is done, press done. So now we can actually check and we can make any folders or hard drives available to share publicly. So for example, I'm going to be using the 60 gigabyte Seagate like I said earlier. I want to access this this hard drive in particular all around my house on my PCs, on my other Macs, etc. So I want to go on the plus there and add the 60 gigabyte 60 gigabyte Seagate here. Here it is. It says devices. I've got the Macintosh HD and I've got the 60 gigabyte Seagate. So I'll just click on that, or click on a folder if you just want to do a folder. But in my case, I'm going to map a network drive. So I'm adding the 60 gig Seagate to the list of shared public folders. Now is the time to sort out your user preferences. So you can set, I've set everyone to be able to read and write from the hard drive from any computer in the house. Because there's no one here that's going to mess that up. Um, it's just, you know, so set any uh, privileges that you want for everyone or administrators or just this system administrator. And add any folders or hard drives that you want to be able to access from anywhere in your home. So, you know, if it's a file server, you're likely to add all of your big capacity hard drives to this list here, all of your hard drives. And once that's done, if you don't want to make any changes, click the lock to finish that. And that is it. You can now access your files from Windows, Ubuntu and Mac. But there is a further step for Windows. If you want to be able to access it all the time, you need to go to computer. Uh, just for proof here, you can go on network and I can access the Power Mac G4 server. There you go, it says Daniel PC, which is this Acer PC I'm on now that you're watching, and PMG4 server, which is the Power Mac. And I can actually access all of my hard drives from here, so that doesn't actually matter. But I don't necessarily have permissions for all of the hard drives, and um, you have to add them to the list anyway if you want to be able to access them from Linux or other Macs. So that's why that step is done. But to access them permanently, we need to go back to computer and, you know, say I want to just access the hard drive all the time. I want to store video files on this hard drive and it's not here. I'd, I'd have to go to the G4 server every time. I'd have to access the hard drive separately every time. So to make it more permanent, go to computer and add, it says map network drive. Click that. Choose a drive letter. It doesn't really matter as long as it doesn't interfere with any other drive letters you have here. So, you know, I've got C, D, E, F, G. So I'm just going to use Z for the purposes of this. Press browse. And here is my Power Mac G4 server. So click that. And the what the hard drive I want to access is the 60 gigabyte Seagate. So click that and press OK. Make sure it's reconnected logon. So it will always connect to this as long as the server is switched on. And press finish. So here is the 60 gigabyte Seagate. This is actually in my Power Mac G4. And I can access all the files now from the PC and from any other operating system. And it's now permanently connected as a hard drive at a network location. So I can see here 60 gigabyte Seagate at Power Mac G4 server. Drive letter is Z. Um, 
shows me the file system, space free, total size, and it's as if it's part of this computer. I can now drag and drop files into that. I can I can delete files from it from here. I can move files between the PC hard drives and the Mac hard drives. And you can just keep adding hard drives from the server by mapping them if you wish. And all of these hard drives that are in the system preferences here in the shared folders will be available on all computers in your network so long as you've followed all of the steps in this video to you know a suitable degree. So that's pretty much it. You've now got you've now turned what was possibly before a useless old computer into a fantastic file server and at the fraction of a cost of what it would uh, be to do it properly.